One of the fixed stars of the universe of criminal justice is the idea that nobody voluntarily confesses to a crime she or he didn't commit. I look at Angie's case, and in 23 years I've been trying to put this puzzle together, and the center's missing. Like any good plot twist, Carol Dodge does something few would expect. If I didn't have to know about this, I would say, but I do not know. In 2008, she tracked down Chris Tapp's new defense lawyer, John Thomas. One day after court, Carol Dodge stops me, and I thought, oh no, this is not going to be good. I'm representing Chris Tapp. Her daughter was brutally murdered. Carol told me that I needed to watch the videotapes of Chris's interrogations, and that she thought that Chris Tapp was innocent. I don't know what the hell you guys want from me. There were nine separate interrogations. It was hours and hours of polygraph sessions. Unless you want to just tell me everything right now. I've been trying to. I wish I could. Me, in my bright mind, if I help him, you know, I can help him solve this, and I can become a hero, or I'm a good guy, or whatever it is. OK, we're just going to jump right back into it here. Law enforcement claims that Chris volunteered statements that indicated that he knew about the rape and murder. But when John Thomas viewed the tapes, he believed that the police wittingly or unwittingly reveal details of the crime. It wasn't just stab once or slice once. There was a lot of aggression. They ask him questions about, OK, well, where did she live? Did she like be on the corner, or was it? And they say, no, no, Chris. It was a one block. They ask him, which room was she killed in? Where did he stick her in? In the bedroom, or in the living room, or in the kitchen? In the living room. It was in the living room. Yeah. And they go, no, Chris, it's over here. She was killed in the bedroom. However, at Chris's trial, the detectives testified that they had evidence that proved Chris was lying to them, and that Chris always knew where Angie lived and where she was killed. Separately, Carol Dodge, along with John Thomas, reached out to an expert in wrongful convictions to review the interrogation tapes. Honestly, I just don't know. I do. I should do. This was the first time that a victim's mother called me and said, I've got real concerns that the man who killed my daughter is innocent. Drizzen created a report that would later be used in Chris Tapp's appeals. You know an accessory? It's the polygrapher that suggests to Chris he could get the gas chamber for his role in this crime. If they get life, the first the gas chamber. It's clearly the kind of threat that can lead people to give false confessions. The Innocence Project, an advocacy group for the wrongfully convicted, also joined Chris Tapp's defense team. I think that people would be shocked to know that the police can lie to you. The police can say that they have evidence in the case that actually doesn't exist. You moved out of my mind right now. You were getting your Although police tactics like these are legal, Drizzen argued in his report that detectives took them too far. In my opinion, the polygrapher wasn't there to test the accuracy of Chris Tapp's stories on the lie detector. The charge you're telling is saying to me, you were there. He was there to tell Chris that he failed the lie detector test to get Chris to change his story to meet their evolving theory. That Ben Hobbs killed Angie Dodge and that Chris Tapp somehow participated in the crime. When I first took office in January 2015, the Bonneville County Prosecutor's Office began the search for and the hiring of an independent investigator to look into Chris Tapp's conviction. It became pretty clear that a lot of the information that Tapp had was provided to him by law enforcement, and there were concerns by our investigator regarding uh, statements made by the polygrapher uh, during the polygraph examinations that were coercive in nature. 
However, the independent investigation concluded that Tapp was present when Angie was attacked and stabbed, but cast doubt on his confession regarding his personal involvement in her death. Drizzen believes that Chris looked guilty because of the psychological tactics that he says detectives used. I mean, that's my thing. If I was there, I'd remember it, wouldn't I? One thing that interrogators often do is they attack a suspect's confidence in their own memory. I wasn't there. Well, Wait, I think you're you telling it to me like I was there. The police told me a few times that if there was something that horrific, you would definitely hide it and it'd go in your subconscious. It's just like me. On some of the real stuff that we see out on the streets, my mind shuts down on me because I don't want to remember it. I started second guessing myself during all this. I started to not believe in myself or who I was. I don't know, because right now everything I've been saying, what I think is right in my head, it's been wrong. It causes a crisis of confidence in the suspect. The suspect doesn't know whether those memories are real or they are imagined. You can feel the stress on him, and it's really hard to watch. You were there, you're the one that held her down, but then asked you to try to help. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I believe this confession was coerced, and in my opinion, with sophisticated interrogation techniques, any one of us could find ourselves confessing to a murder we didn't commit. Did she say anything? Help. <laughs> you heard her say help? Yeah. Okay. I just didn't do nothing, I promise. You think you're doing the right thing and you just want to help them. I was so scared and I just kept trying to do whatever they wanted. I kept trying to answer their questions. If I wanted to go home. When a jury hears a defendant say, I did it, it's almost as good as a conviction right then and there. It is extraordinarily hard for juries to understand that somebody would confess to a crime that they didn't commit. I can say, I think without any equivocation, that had Mr. Tepp not confessed, there would have been no conviction in this case. At least two of the detectives who were involved claim that they never gave Chris any information, that all of the incriminating details that he came up with, he had simply volunteered. How much will he serve before he's eligible for parole? It will certainly be at least 30 years, so it will still be a very, very long time. We reached out to the original detectives on this case who have since retired, but they didn't respond. Ultimately, the prosecutor issued his own report in 2016. He determined that the statements Tapp's attorneys said were coerced were similar to statements Chris made to acquaintances. The question for me was whether there was new, clear and convincing evidence of innocence. There simply was not. Carol Dodge is looking at what the jury never saw. She is seeing the fullness of this interrogation. She realized that Chris Tapp didn't know anything about this crime, that he'd been wrongfully convicted, and that whoever killed her daughter, he was still out there. There is one person that killed my daughter. That's what the DNA shows. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.